It's one of the best hockey weekends around town. Danny Hendrickson from the Hendrickson Foundation joins to share all of the exciting happenings going on at this year's National Hockey Festival at the National Sports Center in Blaine. Come check it out, and you might even see Kirsten and I get wet. Polar plunge wet, guys. Come on now. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, brought to you by Talk North, Grain Belt, Jim Beam, Livia, and Royal Credit Union. This is Season 4, Episode 179. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. 40% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2021. James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporated, Fairmont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. What's up? We're back. Episode 179. So excited. Danny Hendrickson joining us from the Hendrickson Foundation to talk about this upcoming weekend's big Hendrickson Foundation Festival. It is one of my favorite weekends, Kirsten. It is so, so exciting. So I cannot wait to talk more about that. Uh, But let's talk first a little NHL. Sorry, guys. No Minnesota Wild News. But because Kirsten and I love hockey, we're going to talk Stanley Cup stuff. Uh, particularly, Kirsten, you have a new favorite player in the National Hockey League. Matthew Kachuk. How could you not be a Matthew Kachuk fan right now? I'm I mean, I I don't I don't know how I feel about the Panthers as a whole. Currently, the Florida Panthers are in the Stanley Cup finals for the second time in history, first time since 1996, which was just like their third year in existence, because I know Minnesota fans love to hear those types of stories. Uh, They lost in a four game sweep to the Colorado Avalanche in 96. But similarly, the Panthers had beaten the Boston Bruins in the first round. They uh, then took down the Philadelphia Flyers. I mean, obviously way in the past, but I don't know how I feel about the cats doing what they're doing. They barely made the freaking playoffs to begin with. Honestly, I'm really here for it. I love what they're doing right now, mainly because I love that the NHLs wasn't predictable this season. Everyone, us included, when you asked at the start of the year, especially once it got later in the regular season, who's going to win the cup? Everyone and their mom was like the Boston Bruins. Cause how could you bet against them based on everything that they were doing? Um, and so to see Florida have upset them in the seven game fashion that they did um, after barely making it into the playoffs, that was cool to see. And then they just kept trucking. So to see them now in the Stanley cup final, especially cause we're waiting for Dallas to get eliminated. I'm very disappointed that they didn't get swept. Um, that's what I was hoping for. Dallas pushes it to five games as of today when we're recording this episode. Um, but no one wants Vegas to win. So everyone should be a Florida Panthers fan. I mean, it is tough because usually you want to cheer for the um, Western Conference, right? Like usually you want to see somebody from the West advance. That's kind of how I've always felt about it. But yeah, now I just, I don't want Dallas. I don't want Vegas. I kind of wanted Vegas though to close out the sweep. Joe Pavelski, the savior in overtime for them. Uh, Not to mention now they are ruining Memorial Weekend by playing a game of hockey while I'm out camping trying not to watch hockey. So that whole comp, I just, yeah, I don't want either of those teams, I guess. Maybe you're right. Maybe I have to be on the Florida Panthers train. Yeah. Leave it to the Dallas stars to ruin Memorial day weekend for everybody. So thank you, Joe Pavelski and crew. Also, I don't get the whole cheering for the Western conference thing. As far as I'm concerned, everyone in the Western conference is like an enemy. Like you play them throughout the season. No, like if it's not the wild, have it be somebody from the East. Hmm. That's an interesting take. I want to know what you guys think. What's your take? Do you think that like, I guess that's how my dad is, right? Like my dad raised me to be like, well, you cheer for the team that beats you, which I don't always agree with, but I I've always just stuck to my, my conferences. Like, all right, that's cool to see somebody from the West take down. Maybe that also gives because participation trophy vibes. To doesn't me. give participation trophy vibes. We don't give participation trophies, but maybe it's also, because usually the East is so dominant, right? Like the East kind of tends to take over, at least in the hockey realm of things. It's nice to see the West remind people that there's other parts of the country, you know, namely some of these flyover states or places that maybe you don't think of 
for hockey. So maybe that's also why I am a Western Conference fan. I mean, I like it from that perspective. I do like the representation and I do love that, especially in the Stanley Cup playoffs, we've been able to see a lot more representation from markets to help really grow the game. Like as much as I had given Seattle crap, like it was awesome to see them do what they were doing to just grow the game in general. And I think that's another reason too, why I'm very like on board this Florida Panthers train right now as well. Cause it's not, I don't want to say traditional hockey market, but it's not like a Toronto Maple Leafs or Pittsburgh Penguins, Chicago Blackhawks, like teams of that nature that everyone has really come to know household names. So I think that's made it more fun as well. Yeah, no, that's probably a fair point. Although Tampa's already brought the cup to Florida enough times for recent history that I kind of am like, meh, I don't want to. Very different area of Florida though. Yeah, Sunrise, Tampa, it's all Florida, which is all kind of a hot mess. Um, You know, the good thing about if the Panthers win, because this is truly what I look at. I look at the Minnesotans on the roster. That's the biggest thing to me, right? Like who is going to bring a Stanley Cup here to Minnesota? Um, You have, I think it's Alex Lyon is the only one, right? Possibly. Matt Kierstead from Elk River. I don't know who he is, but he's also on the team. That name and sounds then, familiar. You've got Alex Lyon, the Baudette, Minnesota native. So there's that. And then you've got Eric Stahl, you know, who's doing his thing as well. So maybe we're excited for that, but maybe we're not, because I don't know if we like Eric Stahl anymore. I don't know. I don't know. To be told. What do you guys think? Do you want to cheer for the West? Do you want to cheer for the Panthers? What else about Matthew Kachuk are you digging? Because I don't, I, his face looks very punchable to me. We talk a lot on this podcast about punchable faces. You don't think it's a punchable face? Maybe it's because I also have a punchable face. So like I can relate. (laughs) I don't don't know. You have a punchable face. I think there's a lot of people that would like to argue that with you. (laughs) I think, I think that his brother looks like just a sweetheart, right? Like Brady is just like this podunky cute little like nice kid that's just like happy to be there and Kachuk looks like the I'm gonna steal your girlfriend and not care about it type of player I'm trying to think of how but is I that what you like this. about that well I mean if we're looking at my track record with guys that I've dated in the past <laughs> that's kind of the type of guys I've dated now granted I do need to pick better men that's neither here nor there um Yes, but no, he's just got a swagger to him, and I'm a fan of that. The whole Panthers team has a swagger to them right now. I am here for it. That's going to do it for your Stanley Cup roundoff because it's Memorial Weekend, and that's that's all we're going to give you. Um, Chris, what are you going to do for Memorial Weekend? I am heading to my hometown of Rochester, Minnesota. Um, I could go and tell you guys everything I love about the city, how underrated it is, but we'll save that for another day probably later this off season when we just need more to talk about. Uh, (laughs) But I will be going to my friend's house. We're going to be grilling out all weekend, um, engaging in some adult beverages and on a slip and slide. We're building a slip and slide. So I'm very excited. Even my dog, he's excited. He'll be hanging out with my mom and my brother. I call it his vacation house, AKA Mm -hmm. my mom's house. He loves to sunbathe on the deck. I'm going to bring out his little kitty pool so he can splash around in there. So it's going to be a great weekend all Just around. Living a life of luxury. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm camping. I'll be sleeping on a dirt floor. So it'll be good. It'll oh, be you're great. excited for that. I'm so excited. That's you just my love jam. Camping. I love camping. I love being outside. Um, we'll see how it goes with three toddlers. The bottle of vodka I purchased today is large. So let's hope that that helps with the transition we're only doing two nights we'll be home on sunday anyway so that's nice but yeah i'm uh apprehensive at best i'll probably listen to a little bit of hockey we're heading over to wisconsin so i don't know you know they don't get much service or life out that way so they'll be grateful for us visiting i'd imagine they have cheese for you we know you all love your cheese love my cheese love it i don't know how you can't it's so so good and it's on my Olivia diet plan as well which we also Ooh. love we can have I have a string cheese for my snack sometimes maybe I'll swap it out for like a piece of cheese and an apple it's not bad uh Olivia go do it I'm jacked about how svelte I am getting courtesy of our friends at Olivia. 
You look great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stop. Just stop. All right, guys. We'll wrap this up. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Danny Hendrickson joins us to talk all about the Hendy Foundation and the fun and exciting weekend happening up in Blaine. Stay tuned. Hey, guys. Jesse Pierce here. Summertime weather has finally reached Minnesota, which means fun in the sun. Let Livia Weight Control Centers help you get healthier and active this summer. With Livia's doctor-recommended program, you could lose up to 15 pounds or more by the 4th of July. How fantastic does that sound? I myself started my journey a month back, have lost almost 20 pounds, 11 inches, and I'm still going. I absolutely love this program and my people out at the Woodbury Center. Uh, right now, too, you can take advantage of Livia's premier all-access offer of 50% off plus a free gift. This deal is an exclusive one-week-only deal, so do not miss out. Call 855-GO-LIVIA or visit Livia.com. That's L-I-V-E-A.com. Livia has been voted Minnesota's best weight loss program two years in a row. Find out why. Mention Jesse Pierce, the Bar Down Beauties, when you go sign up and get summer ready today. We're back. Joining us now, the infamous, the popular, the beloved Hendrickson, Danny Hendrickson, of course. Uh, Danny, what's going on, buddy? How are you? Long time no see. I am. I'm great. We're we're getting excited for a, a giant weekend uh, that uh, I'm sure we'll get into. But uh, it's a it's a it's a beautiful weekend and uh, it's a beautiful day and, uh, to be a Minnesotan uh, this weekend and next. Exactly. Let's start there. Talk about next weekends or this coming weekends. Rather, we're recording this on a Friday. Listening to on a mm-hmm. Monday slash Tuesday. Uh, the Hendrickson Foundation, the biggest event you guys have of the year, showcasing all of the disciplines of special hockey. Just start off with how excited you are for the weekend and then tell people a little bit about what they can come to expect now that you guys have been doing this for quite some time out in Blaine. Yeah, this is this is year seven. So uh, we throw uh, uh, well, we we, we love, we're throwing a, a tournament for 80 hockey teams with disabilities. We like to say diversified hockey. It's just a little bit better than the word uh, disabled in the Hendrickson Foundation's humble opinion. But uh, so we're throwing this giant tournament uh, all weekend long, June 2 to 4 at the National Sports Center in Blaine. We've got warrior hockey, military veterans. We've got special hockey, cognitive. We've got sled hockey, uh, newer, uh, also blind hockey. And then we have deaf and hard of hearing in exhibition games. So uh, it's June 2 to 4 all weekend. If you had to pick one day to go, I'd say June 3rd uh, is definitely the party, the uh, the extravaganza day. And that's going to be topped off by an awesome concert Saturday night outside. Good for Gary. Everything's free. Uh, it's just a giant celebration of hockey and uh, all the disciplines we support. And out of everything on that weekend, I mean, you mentioned it's it's a big deal and how much fun it is and everyone looks forward to it each year so what out of everything if you had to pick a favorite what would you say is your favorite part you know the the neat part is about you're talking about people that you know my dad used to say they were born with a curveball or something happened in their life that's a curveball but seeing the people that have that not everything has you know been super easy for them but seeing the appreciation people have to have you know a wonderful tournament but a simple hockey tournament the appreciation people that they have that you might you know it's it's just that over overall feeling it's the moms and the dads watching their their kid play and it could be an adult now but he's playing sled hockey and they can't believe you know how much we put into this and how much people love to be out of it and the positive energy that's created this whole weekend so it just has to be the admiration appreciation that uh that you get from the thousands of people that are there i mean you guys have the perfect slogan for that hockey changes lives and i know i've been a witness to that i've been able to check out the foundation events uh the past couple of years now i was able to coach the blind hockey blind hockey to me is the most fascinating it is so amazing to watch i mean i can barely play with everything intact and the way that these blind hockey players perform and the way that they have adapted the game to make it so unique to them. Tell people a little bit more about that avenue and just how cool it is to show people like, Hey, see again, hockey is for everybody. Right. It's yeah. Blind hockey. It still amazes me too. So basically they're everybody's legally blind. There's a, you know, qualification you must have Uh, the goalies generally. And I'm, 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 try to be as PC as possible, but their lights out, like they yeah. can't see at all. <laughs> and then the defenseman can see a little better, 
possibly shapes, you know, there's, there's all different levels of, you know, a vision. And then the forwards can see the best, but they're legally blind, but they, they all, um, you know, everyone's a little bit different, but it's, it's unbelievable to me too. And what's different about, they have a puck that's got ball bearings and it's an oversized puck. And so when it moves, it makes a noise. And then when you come into the offensive zone, you have to make at least one pass and that's to give the goalie a chance <laughs> to know, you know, where the puck is, but it's a, uh, it's truly amazing. Like I, I still, like I've been out on the ice with them too. And I have a funny story that I could, uh, I'd love to share. And do it. Do it's it. about hockey. So um, they're doing this uh, blind hockey expo uh, here in St. Paul. And so we did like, it was USA versus a bunch of celebrity type people and celebrity be like myself. So not big time celebrities, but like, <laughs> you know, Joe Diedzik was out there. I remember. And my brother was out I think there. Bruno was out there, right? Another, yeah, they're superstars, right? So Darby's leaving the ice, and so is a player. We're playing against them. It's a blind hockey player, and they totally collide. Like, Darby's not looking. The person that plays blind hockey, you know, couldn't see that well. So nonetheless, they hit. It's a yard sale. Everybody stops. We're trying to check to see if everybody's okay. And the blind hockey player stands up, and he goes, not going to lie to you. Couldn't see you. And then everybody just started dying laughing. We continued on, but it's it's that, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's blind hockey, women's hockey, men's hockey, youth hockey, you know, warrior hockey. It's it's a camaraderie you get from, uh, you know, being around your teammates and, you know, getting exercise and having fun. That's amazing. Do you have any other stories that you just have tucked back? Uh, well, what, what are the other ones? I, the... <laughs> Good stories. Well, you know what? I I would just say that, you know, when you look at sled hockey and warrior hockey, this is a tournament style event for them. So they're going to play a three game round robin. And then on Sundays, uh, uh, it's championship Sunday. So I just can't believe, and I know that we're all hockey players, so we get it and we get competitive no matter what it is, but I just can't believe like how much they want to win come Sunday and just watching, you know, the parents cheer on the, the kids who could be an adult now, but just watching, just watching the, like how bad they want to win. It's, it's just so, it's so fun. That's uh Saturday is the day that I'd say to come and celebrate and party and, you know, food, there's everything there, but Sunday is actually a really, really cool day because, you know, you're watching people compete at a really high level and it's just kind of fun to watch. I mean, you mentioned all the family members that are out there, obviously supporting the cause, but what I really love too is, the people that don't maybe have a true connection or a true relationship just out there to watch some hockey out there to support it. Because I think that's so important, right. Is to have everybody behind it. And it is, it's just such a fun weekend. Everybody out there is having a fantastic time. I mean, how cool is that? Especially as you'd mentioned your dad, this was a huge part of his life. How cool is it to still have this carry on his legacy carried on in such a fantastic manner? It's super cool. My dad, uh, he, he died a little young, but he had a great, great full life at 75. But it's, uh, there's no question. Uh, this is like, this is a legacy for him. It's fun for not just me, but for all the HF, you know, people to, to do it to honor Larry. And uh, we do a lot of little things like we'll put pictures of him. I just think to a lot of us, he represented, you know, love caring about others, you know, so many of the values that everybody has, but like, because he's gone, we can act like he was perfect, even though obviously he <laughs> wasn't. But after somebody dies, he, anything he was good at, he became great at. Anything yeah. he was bad at, we forgot. So, yeah. but we get to really, you know, think about values and helping other people. And so uh, that's going to be good. And we, this year at our concert, uh, uh, we have a drink. It's called the Big Lair. Uh, I don't know exactly what's in it, but it's a vodka based lemonade you know something summery so yeah you gotta check out the big lair gotta have the big lair well because i know you've told me him and her brooks had a pretty good relationship that usually involved one too many uh cases of beer upon a time correct yeah yeah him and her we were good buddies and uh <laughs> yeah the, my, the first time they met i think they were drinking olympia beer if the, i don't know if that's still around but uh yeah my dad i they picked him up for a, a minnesota camp and they had a couple beers on you know as they made their way up to uh, an up north cabin, they stopped and they bonded <laughs> over a beer. And you don't have to have a beer, but I think uh, some people have fun with it. And, you know, the storytelling gets a little better. 
It does. It absolutely does. You had mentioned Saturday, the big day, the big event. What time do things kick off? Um, and again, uh, what's the cost of admission and everything kind of covers it for the weekend, right? Yeah, everything's free. There's not, uh, well, uh, beverages are free. We have free water everywhere. Uh, the outside, the reception part has, we have water and uh, protein drinks, protein to go drinks. The, the, that's all free, but um, uh, pop and uh, alcohol is out of pocket, but we have uh, famous Dave's uh, catering. Uh, so we have uh, pulled pork sandwiches. That's free. The concert's free. Um, but so I, the, the concert's from six to nine. The hockey is basically all weekend. It ends at uh, like around six or seven. That's when the last games will stop. But we also have a polar plunge. It's this mobile plunger uh, from one to four where teams are jumping in and they're raising money. So that'll have like a, uh, a parking lot, you know, tailgating type field where we'll have music. That'll be super fun. That's one to four. So I would just say come anytime. Mm -hmm. And as you know, you want to go inside and watch a couple games or, you know, get a feel for all the different disciplines. Um, but uh, I know Nordy, I believe Nordy's coming at four 30. I, uh, I was told uh, uh, Marcus Foligno uh, is coming uh, in the afternoon uh, as well. I still got to coordinate on that part, but um, they'll be the wild is definitely represented with all these different games. You can play outside. Uh, there will be, you know, players, ex players, you know, that type of stuff. But unfortunately there's no celebrity game for you to coach this year. I mean, that's probably best for the opposing team as I was an undefeated coach. Uh, me and Buzzy Schneider it. really just dominating uh, other right. teams, you know, pulling the goalie, that kind of crazy stuff. But it's all right. It's probably fair. Marcus Foligno, by the way, Danny, our butte of the year, if you can see this trophy back here. So maybe we'll bring that to officially give it to him. Uh, oh, nice. Him. He is a beauty. Right? It's right. mostly because he's just always responsive to me in text message, and I appreciate that. Well, he's also kind of cute. I mean, right? He's <laughs> tall and pro-athlete you, you said it not us <laughs> right, Danny. that's right. fine that's that's yeah. all all you uh awesome i cannot wait what other fun things i mean obviously this is your big weekend but the hendrickson foundation is constantly doing things to bring attention awareness and funds to special hockey and all the different uh diversities tell us a little bit about what else you guys got going on right now well, we're actually, for the first time ever, we're planning a sled camp. Um, so a sled hockey combine, we're calling it. It's up north. Uh, it's in Ely. It's uh, it's going to be, that's in August. So there, there's going to be 35 to 40 uh, sled hockey players up there. And they've done it in years past, but we're we're coming in to just put a little extra flair on it. That's exciting. We have our big golf scramble that everybody does. Ours is out at Legends and Prior Lake. That's in August. But this weekend... Uh, this Friday, by far, is our biggest weekend. Uh, we've we've raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, it's got a real simple business model too. Uh, you know, this costs you know six figures to run it, but we we raised you know multiple hundreds leading up to it, so it's free for all the players and their families and anybody else that wants to come. And then all of the money that's left over, we give all of that to the Minnesota program. So there's teams coming from. Alaska to Florida and everywhere in between, but all the excess money that's created uh, goes to their programs and helps uh, and make it more affordable, you know, throughout their seasons. It is. You guys do an absolutely tremendous job. Again, all the disciplines are so fascinating, so unique, and it just brings everybody together for the sake of hockey, the sake of, of just good people too. I recommend not missing out no sled race this year then either. Right. So Audra can't I know. And try to beat us. Well, that's the thing. It's like we had so many teams this year. And so we just we we got rid of the celebrity game. And like a lot of people are actually mad about it. I didn't think people care that much, but they do. And so we're just focusing on this, you know, this mobile plunge deal during the afternoon. And we still want everyone to come out. And then we've got uh, obviously the concert. We're trying to make that, you know, a really fun event, not just for the spectators, but obviously the the real athletes that are there and their families. Um, so we can bring it back next year. You can, you can, you and Bud Schneider can uh, face off again and you can, you know, try mm -hmm. to beat Audra Martin in a sled race. Maybe she next cheated year, but... on the sled race. She had, after she had done so poorly the previous year, she set everybody up and was like, yep, I'm going to take the best sled and just yeah. cruised on to victory. So we yeah. still got beef over that, but yeah, no, that, you guys do. <laughs> I'm already missing that. Yeah. I know you guys do a tremendous job. No better place to be this weekend than out in Blaine at the sports center, uh, checking out 
all of the Hendrickson Foundation events. The Polar Plunge, Kirsten and I will be out there ourselves. Maybe we'll plunge, maybe we'll not. You have to show up to find out. If you and- don't jump in, uh, we're going to have like a rubber duck, like your chicken, like you're a chicken S, you know, like, so it, even if you don't, you guys throw it in and then people can boo you. Oh, so we if get you don't publicly wanna, If shamed. you don't want to, I mean, my hair is not that good, but if, if you got your hair perfect and you don't want to redo it, you can still throw the, the, the chicken in. I mean, it sounds Hitting like boots seems like familiar territory for me. So <laughs> right, <laughs> that's fitting. true. That's true. Danny, you are the best. Where can people find more information, make a donation or do anything to get involved with Hendrickson Foundation? Yeah, it's all on HendricksonFoundation.com. Every single detail that I talked about will be written out a lot more clearly and uh, eloquently than, uh, than, the, than than my mouth. But yeah, HendricksonFoundation.com has every detail. It has my phone number on there. If you if you needed had a question, I'm available. We're we're all about having just an awesome weekend. Yeah, no terrible prank calls though, right? Unless they're really funny. I think well, I don't know. <laughs> it was good ones. Yeah, I don't know. Is that, isn't <laughs> all that my Facebook, information is out there. Isn't that what the messengers me. are for on all these uh, social platforms? Like <laughs> this, this person. That's true. You you would yeah. expect so. Danny, yeah. you're the best. We will see you this upcoming yeah. weekend. Cannot wait. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, come out this weekend. All right, we're going to take another quick break, you guys. We'll be right back. We're back. Uh, Danny, he's just the best. I love his stories. Like, the first time we had him on, Kirsten, it was with Mr. Paul Fletcher as well. Shout out to Fletcher. He is very active with the Hendrickson Foundation, running a lot of that. He was going to join us unfortunately could not he was house shopping um hopefully he bought a sweet house for us to go visit at but cool. anyway we uh we did the interview at in the city's 97 studio and probably 10 minutes into the interview Bruce Boudreau was fired and so I'm sitting there I'm like I gotta go I gotta cut this interview short but before I left Danny gave his pitch to hire Darby as the head coach, which was hilarious. Go back and listen to that episode. It was a February episode again, right as Bruce Boudreau got fired. Um, a hilarious up, but Danny's just a good, good character. Good guy. Great guy. I really, that was my first introduction to him and I really enjoyed him for the little bit that we were able to have him on. So very excited for next weekend to get to see what it's all about too. Yes, it is. It's so much fun. You guys, I'm not even just saying that like it's it's amazing. I've loved being able to be little different parts of that weekend. Uh, As I mentioned, we went out and coached the blind hockey team. That was an incredible experience. Coaching the celebrity games is always a lot of fun. Uh, That polar plunge that they were replacing with is going to be awesome. I will be jumping in because I don't care about my hair. That's fine. That's not going to bother me. Plus, it's for the bit. It's for the content. It's for the kids. More importantly, uh, so come check it out. It's always a good time. I have a blast. Great drinks out there as well. And it's usually a wonderful weekend to be outside with some of hockey's finest. No, yeah, it'll be great. I'm excited to try out that new drink as well. Yeah, the big lair. There we go. I like it. We dig it. That's going to do it for this week's episode. Again, because it's a Friday before Memorial weekend, because it's a short week next week. And because there's nothing really happening in the hockey world. Um, you know, hopefully that will change sometime soon yeah i'm i'm calling out you bill let's uh let's get things moving let's get things you know what let's let bill also enjoy his memorial weekend maybe he just wants to get to summer yeah no fine i guess i can allow that yeah let's not do anything like this weekend i'm not suggesting we go out and do things now i'm saying like you know next tuesday wednesday thursday maybe for the content Wednesday would be good for me because I think I'll need Tuesday for you know what reasons. we should we should really submit our calendars to Bill. I think we should. Okay. Yeah. It would just uh, be nice if the Wild thought about us and our schedules when they made announcements. Right. I don't and think it's scheduled games. Yeah, I don't think that that's too much to ask for. No. Okay. I'll you know as the future assistant to the assistant to the assistant GM, um, I'll make some moves. I'll make some calls. I'll talk to some people. And we'll get that rocking and rolling. I think. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Well, you guys have a great rest of your week. Come see us out in Blaine all weekend long, particularly Super Saturday. Check out the Hendrickson Foundation. Good people. Good things. Uh, let us know what you thought of the episode. Subscribe, rate, like. Shout out to Talk North. Uh, shout out to Soda Stick. Uh, shout out to Royal Credit Union, Grain Belt, Livia, and Jim Beam. 
Cheers to all of them. Cheers to all of you. Love you. Goodbye. See you. This podcast is made possible due to listeners like you. Thank you. Barry near 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 near.